Bill Gates, age 15. Paul Allen, 17. They had a hobby and the vision to share it with the world. Seattle, with money raised at a rummage sale, Lakeside School leased time on a time-shared computer. A few students, including Paul Allen and Bill Gates, experimented with it, writing programs in a computer language called BASIC. They kind of challenged me, could you write a uh, program to do various things, and uh, so I wrote a lot of BASIC programs. The teachers basically handed us a manual and said, hey, you know, if you want to write a BASIC program, here's how you write a paper tape into the teletype. Slowly but surely, we became more than just people who were messing around. We were just like little sponges. We, we tried to absorb everything we could. We really figured out what was going on uh, in the TOPS 10 operating system. Gates and Allen earned free computer time by finding system bugs. Soon, they were earning money, first by writing a scheduling program for the school, later, founding Trafo data to generate county and municipal traffic reports. After graduating from Lakeside, they continued to brainstorm about computing and its possible commercial uses, but they weren't the only ones. When the kit computer from MITS, the Altair 8800, was on the January 75 cover of Popular Electronics, then we felt like, boy, it was going to happen without us, and we'd be left out. Many computers were coming, becoming to challenge uh, the big mainframe computers. Gates and Allen realized that the Altair, with no software and limited input and output capability, had little practical function. But if they could write a basic instruction code, the Altair could easily be programmed. And so we called this company. We said that we had a basic, uh, which we weren't, we didn't have it done yet, but were they interested? Gates and Allen rushed to complete a version of basic for the Altair. Allen finished the program on his flight to MIT's headquarters in Albuquerque. All the things we'd done in high school had prepared us we knew how to write basic language software, and so it all fell into place. In the meeting with MITS, everything worked perfectly. They signed an exclusive agreement allowing MITS to distribute their version of BASIC on a royalty basis and moved to Albuquerque to write more software. In Albuquerque, Gates and Allen worked to refine their code but hobbyists made unauthorized copies and distributed them. Many hobbyists felt hardware and software designs should be free and exchanged openly. We put a tremendous amount of blood, sweat, and tears in that stuff. So when we cut wind of the fact that these homebrew computer clubs, people were just handing out copies of our stuff for free, and we felt, hey, our stuff's reasonably priced, and just to, to rip it off and give it away for free, Bill was just incensed. Gates fought back with a strongly worded letter to the hobbyist community, urging them to pay up. He even included an address to send their checks. The controversial letter was reprinted in several hobbyist newsletters, including one for the Homebrew Computer Club in Silicon Valley. It did get people licensing the basic, and we were able to hire more people and write a lot more software, so uh, it actually, uh, in that case, worked out quite well. Gates and Allen, now in their early 20s, formed a partnership in 1976. They ended their license agreement with MITS and through litigation, regained control of BASIC. Now they could license BASIC to any hardware manufacturer. They named their new company, Microsoft. Gates and Allen moved their staff back to the Seattle area in 1979 and incorporated two years later. Microsoft's customers were still primarily hobbyists, but that was about to change. In 1981, IBM needed an operating system for its soon to be released personal computer. Digital research with its control program for microcomputers seems the logical choice to supply it, but an agreement was never reached. Instead, IBM turned to Microsoft. Microsoft bought a similar operating system re-engineered it, and licensed it to IBM as PC-DOS. It was a key business decision. Now there was a massive market for Microsoft products. By 1983, nearly one million copies of DOS were sold. 
the personal computer market soared and Microsoft's fortunes soared with it. On March 13, 1986, Microsoft went public. Bill Gates and Paul Allen. In 1975, they were afraid they'd miss out on the computer revolution. Instead, they helped create it. <laughs> 